Yeah. We said up till now we didn't say anything about uh, how does uh, bytecode get exe get executed or whether it gets uh, compiled into machine code because obviously if we just rely on bytecode uh, interpretation it will be much slower than uh, than uh, native processes. So uh, obviously Java since an earlier since an earlier version which is I think Java uh, three one or, or two or three they introduced hotspot which contains a just-in-time compiler. A just-in-time compiler, basically, it's not a feature just for Java. They, it's used somewhere else, obviously. It's not Java. It's not the one that invented it. But uh, it's the idea is that while running the bytecode, it compiles the, the bytecode into the native uh, instructions of the target platform. OK? And so you have something called tier compilation. Uh, at the beginning, I said there are server VM and client VM. So what's the difference between client VM and server VM? It's basically the client VM, both both uh, both the client and the, save, and the server VM, they have a just-in-time compiler. But the difference is that, that server VM does more complex optimizations. It's uh, used for server-side applications where uh, uh, it's required to have uh, high performance. And so the optimizations used in the just-in-time compiler of the ServVM are more complicated. This compiler in the ServVM is called the C2 compiler. Okay? The client compiler, which is in the client VM, is called the C1 compiler. Okay? So in Java 7, they decided to, uh, to have in the server VM both the client compiler and the, C the server compiler. Why? Because the C1 compiler is actually suitable for uh, client applications, uh, for example, GUI applications to make startup faster. It doesn't uh, profile uh, for a long time methods. Uh, so how does uh, compilation occur, generally speaking? The, the Java virtual machine will monitor the methods that are frequently executed. And uh, if it decides that this method is executed uh, often enough, it will compile it to machine code. The C1 compiler <laughs> does not take too much time to profile. It does not do aggressive optimizations. So it means that uh, the startup time is faster in the C1. Whereas the C2, it prefers to sacrifice startup time to optimize the long running performance. Okay, and so what they what they did in tiered compilation, they mixed both. They said, okay, we're going to use both the C1 compiler and the C2 compiler. We are, uh, and this way, it will have uh, good startup time. And sorry, when when the profiling uh, happens, and, and really it means it's going to execute the method to collect some profiling information and then decide. Or yes, when you call first the. When you first call the code, mm -hmm. it will do interpretation. Okay. While interpreting, it will uh, profile the methods. It will check what methods are executed mostly and how they are executed. And it will decide that, OK, this method is executed has been, has been executed 1,000 times. So I want to uh, optimize it. I want to compile it using the C2 co C1 compiler. And then when uh, this, uh, this method gets also executed, let's say uh, 10,000 times, or I don't know, 100,000 times, it gets compiled by the C2 compiler, which makes it more op optimized. And all of this at one time? Yes, at one time. OK, okay so uh, if compilation is enabled by default, you can switch it off using this VM option. And in order to see the compiled methods, the methods that are being compiled, which you don't usually need to do, but in case I don't know, you're debugging something, you can use this flag, print compiler. So, for example, you have this VM option, which is 10,000, which means that this is the number of invocations uh, that must be done in order to compile it, to compile the method. Now, if we check the details of this tier compilation in Hotspot, it has five levels. We have level zero, which is interpretation, which means that 
we don't compile it to, to native code. And the, <coughs> the next three levels are for C1. The C1 compiler can uh, compile to uh, several levels. And then you have one level, level four for the C2. Usually, the flow is from level zero to level three to level four, which means that at first you start, the JVM starts to, uh, using inter the interpreter. Uh, while uh, profiling the method, it decides to compile it using level three. So C1 with full profiling, it means that it has enough profiling to, to decide to compile it. And if it gets also executed enough and profiled enough by the C2, by the JVM, it will call the C2 compiler to compile it to level four. There are some exceptions. If the method is very simple, uh, it will just be compiled using level one because the compiler will know that there is no point in doing more profiling. It cannot be further optimized. And in case the, these compilers, they have queues, okay? They, uh, they receive the methods to, uh, to, compile, to, to be compiled. In case the C1, the C2 queue is busy, so you have, a, you have a method compiled to C1, and it wants to be compiled to C2, but the queue, the queue of the C2 is busy, it will go back to the C1 compiler, but optimize it more using level two instead of level one. Okay, and if C1 is, the C1 queue is busy, but C2 is free, it can compile, the profiling will be done at level zero. It will be slower, obviously, but as soon as enough profilation ha happens, or uh, as soon as you have enough uh, profiling information, it will jump directly to level four. Okay, so. Uh, this is a big picture. You have the interpreter, it compiles to native execution using C1, C2, and you have somewhere a code cache to contain uh, the code of the compiled methods. Ah, okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, sometimes it should never happen, but sometimes if this fills up, for example, no more compilation will be done. Okay, well, it shouldn't happen. Okay, let's see some of the optimizations used by or done by uh, just in time compilation. You have first uh, one example is method inlining. Method inlining it means that okay one more before we, we check the just in time compilation. Uh, I I forgot to say that the compiler the original compiler of Java does not do much optimizations. In fact, it doesn't almost do anything. It just compiles translates the Java source to the bytecode. Why? For uh, First, for simplicity, because you don't want to have a compiler uh, just just translate to bytecode and uh, and let the JVM do the optimizations. Second, in order to allow the compilation, if you if you change the bytecode to do optimizations, it will not be very easy to, uh, to not be easy to uh, decompile. So, the, the job of the optimizations is referred to the JVM, which is the just that compiler. In this case, let's say you have a method foo that adds 8 and 10. In this case, the compiler, the just time compiler, if this turns out to be executed a lot, it will inline the statement above. It this removes the overhead of method invocation. Okay, so next you have that code elimination. That code elimination is when you have uh, somewhere you did something, you get an input, you compute a value from the input, but then you don't use the value. The, the compiler can figure out that you are not doing anything, so it just doesn't execute it, it basically with nothing. I'm assuming it's smart enough to detect the side effect of the side effect. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, actually, this is an interesting thing to think about because the get input it may have side effects. Yeah. If it gets removed, initializing the global value or something. Yes. Uh, hosting some event. Or mm -hmm. or yes. Uh, then we have the loop invariant uh, hosting. So, what is this uh, optimization? 
you have a loop, but inside the loop, you do something that's not dependent on, uh, on the loop uh, mm -hmm. value. Okay? So the compiler will figure out this and it will move this state, these two statements above, above the expression. Loop on switching something similar. If you have uh, a loop inside it, you have a condition, and this condition is unaffected by this um, by this loop. Translated to this this one. To if condition do the first loop with the first branch, and then in the else loop in the second branch. The so white is going to be faster than because uh, you don't execute the condition. You don't check the condition every time. Okay. Escape analysis. In this case, you have a method called escape analysis. You have a Boolean container. It just contains a Boolean. And uh, you, create, you create an instance of it, and uh, you, you do something with it. So in this case, the compiler, just now compiler, will figure out that this object is scoped only within this method does not escape this method. Uh, so what it, what will it do? It will actually do something equivalent to just taking this field and assigning it here. Uh, instead of creating this object, which may take, if you have just a Boolean uh, wrapper, to create an object <coughs> in the heap. So Only for the Boolean or for all the uh, for this object. pipes? Yeah, uh, for, for, the, for, the, for this object. It will occupy obviously size for this field, but it will have overhead, another uh, other space for uh, for he other <coughs> header and, and stuff. So, okay. for example, instead of taking I don't know 24 bytes, it will take eight bytes. When does this happen? If, if it's only part of the class. If this object is only part of this method, does not escape, it's not, uh, it's just a local variable. 